Hello and welcome to One Piece Clockwork Island Adventure. I have some thoughts on it. We'll read the description first. Informed by the Thief Brothers, his ship has been stolen by the Trump siblings who have set up base on Clockwork Island. Monkey D. Luffy, captain of the Going Merry, inspiring Pirate King, worked for his crew Usopp, Zoro, Sanji, and Ami to battle the way up Clockwork Island to reclaim their ship. Very direct and to the point. So, just to start with, this is the first movie we get Sanji in. So, uh, it takes place after his arc. It actually takes place between... I've seen it take place, or say it takes place between episode 53 and 54. So, after Logtown and then into the Warship Island arc, which is like a filler arc. So I, I can at least guarantee it takes place after Locktown, from what all the sources say. It released though about is it this one right here? It released be, uh, between six episode sixty and sixty one, which is the after Warship Island arc, the filler arc, and uh. The uh, finale of Reverse Mountain, I believe. So, there's a little here and there details that... Continuity problems, I guess you could say. But we'll talk about it later. Of course, we have Sanji for the first time in the movie. That's awesome. We uh, These are the tagalongs. Little kid. The big guy. Um, you know how it usually goes. Tagalong. Luffy aspires the young one, young boy, to be a man of the seas, and he fights, uh, stuff like that. He find uh, the whole goal of this movie is that you know how it says they inform the Straw Hats that they the island, the ships on the Clockwork Island. It's actually them two that stole it, but they tell them that it was the pirates, the uh, the Trump siblings, which are just they're based off the cards, animals and cards. Um, that they stole it, but they did to get them to defeat the Trump siblings so that he, so that the big guy could take the little boy to his family on the island. So, kind of convoluted, but at the same time, eh, it's, it's okay. It's good enough for a 55 minute long movie. So we meet them too. Uh, original creator, Oda, director, Juji Shizumizu. Released March 3rd, 2001. Average score, 67. I give it about 6. It has its problems, but it's pretty good. Continuity errors and a few things here and there. It's kind of like what brings down the score, and we'll talk about it. So, the pirates are the Trump siblings. There's Bear King. He has a devil fruit. Got you catching on me. Nine cannon paramecia. Just makes his body hard and he can heat up his fist. Then there's Honey Queen. Who has a devil fruit. Called the Toru Toru no Mi. Liquid. It's a onomatopoeia in Japanese. Like meaning liquid syrup consistency. Which I thought was really interesting idea. Um, But it flows like water. And it acts like water in the movie. You even see her in one scene. Where she's in the water. Without this is before it's revealed that she's a devil fruit fruit user. So like how do I say? Why in the world well you can see what it is. Why in the world would it do that? Like even if it's not seawater, water still hurts. Being submerged that much in water still is detrimental to devil fruit users so kind of weird i guess you could say well that's her but it's not so it's kind of weird maybe it's not water i don't know but that's kind of you don't assume that she's a devil fruit because she's not water and then she turns out to be a devil fruit user which makes no sense because we know that she couldn't be in seawater even though we've seen her in water Whatever. 
Cat, that's the little, little things right there. Um, there's Boojack. His little gimmick is he asked uh, riddles, and Boo is like the equivalent in Japanese the buzzer sound for being wrong. So like, that's where you get that from. Skunk One, he has a little jetpack on his back, covered in fur. Skunk One, and he had a jetpack releases devil gas. It makes your body numb and and like weak. Uh, Pin Joker is the swordsman, you know, fights uh, Zoro. Skunk One fights Usopp. Boo Jack fights Sanji. And then Nami captures her. And, the of course, the captain is taking down Luffy, you know. Uh, his scars from a previous fight between him and Zoro, which I thought was very interesting. Pin Joker versus... Rana Zoro, and then they fight again. He loses again, of course. He does this little gimmick of, like, saying... What is it? Little puns. But he always gets it slightly wrong, and he leads to frustration when the person corrects him, which is entertaining enough. They all have their little gimmicks. Uh, this is also... The person that the person that voices Pin Joker is the same person that voices uh, Do Flamingo or Don Quixote Go, Do Flamingo later in One Piece, which is really interesting. So, kind of East Blue and both the home releases it released along uh, with uh, Django's Dance Carnival, which is a very short thing. Uh, has the official English release as the entertainment box set. Uh, I thought I would take it to it, but nope. It's just that little three movie release set. You can see it on Amazon. It's like for seventeen dollars for three movies. The first three One Piece movies. Da -da -da. Of course, they going Mary stolen the Straw Hat Pirates. So let's get to why they're in what they're in. So the ship gets stolen, and they have to get other clothes. And it takes them a week to like find the ship and why they could find the wear and for nothing is what they're wearing now. So basically that implies you see, uh Luffy's in the same clothes. Uh they have wedding they're not at a wedding, but they have the wedding stuff on. Uh Zoro has the traditional garb, stuff like that. It's interesting. In the background you can see the clockwork island up on the top. They end up putting the going merry the pirates put the Going Mary up on top of the very top of the building. And then you can see the little pirates in the background. And the little uh, tag alongs. It's interesting enough. 55 minutes long isn't much. It does the little... It does the same, like, typical, you can see. I'm going to scroll through it just so you can look at the cast. Uh, yeah, this is the, there's a lot of uh, translation issues for this movie because uh, the translation I watched didn't call them Trump siblings. It was like card siblings. I don't know why. For UK release, the film was titled Adventure of Spiral Island, but the DVA covers the DVA menu, but the film's title translate on screen as Adventures on Clockwork Island, which is the still not exactly right. UK DVD translates to Trump Keto as did Card Brothers. Yeah, that's what I have, despite one member being a woman. And this said Trump siblings, which is close. Here's the continuity notes, which is a good bit because it's weird. The Clockwork Island Adventure lines with canon. It's somewhat more than a previous film. Approach the Grand Line, set, or the concurrently set Warship or Island arc, which is before Reverse Mountain. As we talked about. So this is the warship art. 54 to 61. That's the warship. It's not. But it releases at 60. 
Uh, Zoran, you start to pick this bit with the Mahita and the Google the goggles acquired in Logtown, which is only episode 53, which is Logtown. When Mary changes the starting to close, yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes two notes past left Logtown and makes the films are more likely to precede the warship island arc. Yeah. Um, the film contains a number of teasers for Arabasta Saga, such as the placement of Rook Workship. Yeah. So it's uh, a lot of the stuff is built up at the end. The outro for the credits and everything is building up for what's to come. So we see Arab Arabasta Saga, the Broke Workship, uh, the Going Mary into the Grand Line, Miss Wednesday, Dorian Brogy, Mr. Three, Miss Golden Week, Dalton will pull his crew, Tony Turner Chopper. So we see Chopper in the uh, outro, just like we seen Sanji in the outro last film. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Smoker calling to Skiggy, which we see in Logtown. So I assume that's a teaser for them that we just seen. Uh, Portuguese DJ scrambling the season skiff. Miss Awesome, they lounging behind. Which we know Miss All Sunday to be Nico Robin. So we see true future crew members here, which is really cool. The film is finally preceding film High 3. They're like little things from the first uh, El Drago movie. Interesting. They even reference it in the movie. Very like one line. Uh, they're like, they say. Oh, he's much a better boss than, yeah, they say, you're much better boss than our previous one, yada, yada. It's the Hanging 3 when they introduced a big weapon, which is like a gun, a big cannon gun. Because they have the whole, he has the whole line enslaved, making him weapons. So that's pretty cool. Um, It's a very entertaining movie. Luffy, this is traditional Luffy for sure. Uh, nothing super different from the personalities. Uh, Nami's very much the same. I guess uh, one thing that we can tell is that Zoro, of course, has his swords, so he had to be through Logtown. But Zoro and Sanji don't bicker as much as you would think. Uh, Sanji doesn't have his shoes on most of his movies, so his injury comes from like hitting like spikes. So that was really interesting. And Zoro leaves his swords on the ship, so he doesn't have his swords for most of me, which is very weird because that doesn't really happen. They're they're having to do this crutch of uh, weakening their main like team, even though you really don't need to do that. Like it could have just been because the way this movie makes it out and the way it plays out is that you don't need to them lost their big things, their big weapons. Maybe his ship, but Zoro should still have his his swords and Saji still have shoes well actually Saji not having shoes is a big thing because that's how he easily defeats his fight defeats the boo jack in his fight so that's something that uh that's interesting but Zoro not having his swords isn't really a big thing uh because his, his opponent isn't even a fair fighter. Because he, he locks him behind a cage. Uh, he po he hits him with needles of devil's poison. Or devil's gas it's called. And weakens him. And a few other things. Like a lot of things against Zoro in this movie. He didn't need his weapons not to be with him. Because it probably wasn't much of a thing he could do besides that. I guess, yeah, yeah. at this point he doesn't know how to cut steel. He learns that in the Alabasta arc. So there's no need to uh, have done this. His last fight, he has his swords anyway because they get to the Going Merry and Usopp throws it down to him. It's very weird. The Skunk one, Usopp fights him at the very beginning, at the, when they first get to the big castle. It just by fights him, he holds on to him. And at the end, he shoots him with an explosion at the, at the Going Merry because he loses the fight. He takes, gets put up strung up uh, on something to get shot at and he ends up fighting him at the end takes him down it's not really much of a fight uh Totoro no Mi it's a weird non non canon logia fruit this fruit itself breaks a lot of in universe rules this fruit should not exist this movie 
could not be canon purely because of this fruit. For other reasons, of course, but this fruit makes everything broken. If anyone had that right there and was not affected by water like he was, it'd be broken. Which I, I truly don't think uh, Oda actually made the movie and stuff like that. They just kind of did it, whatever. So, of course, but this is the biggest problem I have with like how they have her character read out. Uh, Logia, at this point, is the most broken fruit is what we see it as. Logia is the can't be hit with normal attacks and stuff like that. So, this fruit breaks everything. Every concept we know. Um... She doesn't need any fight. She gets trapped in a glass jar by Nami. It's pretty non anticlimactic for Logia, Logia user. It's very, she's very weak in all honesty. She's just, I don't know. Uh, his devil fruit truly makes no sense because it, you don't even know he's a devil fruit. I think this could be purely made up and I would believe it. Because all he says at the beginning is he's made out of steel. At least in the translation I watched. He's made out of steel. And I assumed he was being literal about it. Because we have he's not the only person that have a metal arm. The other dude that's a tag along had a metal arm. He could just tell. He could just say. It, it, has, it heats up. And that's it. It could literally be it. But he has a non-canon paramecia. High death fruit. The last body of the user to harden. Heat up his body at will. It's weird. So like it's a it's a tough fight for Luffy. I think the only thing that saves him is they use that big cannon they have. And they reflex it or he grabs it and he throws it back at him and it kind of makes him fall down into this little chasm that keeps the island up or a clock. It's Clockwork Island, so there's a little ratchet at the middle or a crank that if it breaks, it the island falls apart and that's what happens. He breaks the island down. It all falls crumbling to the ground, which is pretty cool. Um, the, they survive because they're all in the ship. Well, they get to the ship real fast. And guess what? The ship has a parachute. A, a uh, parachute. Yeah. It would have been way more realistic if, if, uh, Luffy literally just stretched and became a parachute, <laughs> parachute than what it was. It was weird. But, whatever. They gotta get to the ground without breaking the ship somehow, right? That fruits could be non-existent. I don't think they needed it. Um, but yeah, he's apparently the eleven point six billion or a million bounty is pretty high at this point. Anything above ten million is high in the before the reverse mountain at least. So this is pretty substantial. Uh, he is a hard opponent for sure, but. Of course, we see how he loses. It's Luffy. Um, he saves a whole island to work for him, build weapons. He wants to marry Nami. That's why they kidnapped Nami at the beginning of the movie. Mighty Ken, yep, this is his weapon. Oh, here, seven years ago, Hayden's crew took up a clock and gained control of the island's key before forcing Island to build the big cannon, which he intended to use to become Pirate King. Yeah, everyone wants to become Pirate King. Okay. This is it. Each blue saga. Oh, cool. That's your video game appearance. Um, most of these guys do. At least uh, enemies of this movie. So that's interesting. Is there anything else I want to say about this movie? Other than, it's not bad for what it is, but at the same time, it I would say it's good if you're willing if you're not like a super fan of like one piece if you just want because the, the whole clothing differences is fan service like oh they're getting married yada yada it's just funny stuff things that i wonder how i really wish i knew how this movie was advertised more because i would like to know what what point did they explain the clothes did they ever did you not know into the movie because looking at this cover you're like, this movie has a lot of stuff in it. And within the first 10 minutes, you're like, hmm, okay, the clothes don't matter. The clothes absolutely don't matter. And then it's like, the only thing that matters is the island and the two in the back and the crew, or the enemy. So that's unique. 
it's very fan servicey. Uh, some unlogical, like the, the devil fruits make no sense. That the uh, liquid, liquid, the torture to me, the syrupy, like lady, honey queen. So her name is Honey. Absolutely, it's very. Seeing it, I'm like, that makes no sense. Like, why? Like, why is it doing that? And then it's like, well, it is just a non-canon movie. We we've always accepted movies to be non-canon, and this just reinstates that fact, which is okay. It's an enjoyable movie, though. Um, I do rate it a six out of ten. It's very nice for what it is. It probably was fantastic when it came out more, but at the end, it's still a fifty-five minute long movie that I could say it needs a little bit more time to grow. I do feel like it was rushed more than anything else. If they would have gave a little bit more of an intro to it, or like prolong the time on the Clockwork Island, a little bit more fleshed out backstory to the big guy, not just a little kid, it could be much more interesting. But I don't know truly if the whole whole story could have went an hour and a half for anything I thought. I don't know if it could be that strong. I personally enjoyed it enough if they could rewrite certain things to be non canon breaking like devil fruit him having a the the boss having a devil fruit doesn't need to be a thing then yeah i think it'd be a better movie but at the same time it's enjoyable before it is it's a second one piece movie eh pretty good 6 out of 10 that's about it thank you for watching i appreciate you you have a good